The head of Xbox itself, Phil Spencer, has come out to say there's nothing really to worry about for Halo Infinite. Is he actually being genuine or doing damage control? Stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here once again giving you another news and informational video when it comes to Halo. If you like these kind of videos, make sure you tap that like button. Let me know you want to see some more content like this and it greatly helps out the video and channel. So we have two major bits of news to give you guys today when it comes to Halo. First off, we're going to talk about the Halo TV show and then we're going to go into what Phil Spencer said about Halo Infinite. If you can't for a specific part, if you want to listen to the whole thing, which I think there's definitely stuff to listen to about, check out the timestamps in the description and also in the timeline of this video. So let's start with some good news. The Halo TV show is back on set. If you guys don't know that they've been kind of away for a while due to the recent situation within the world, as you could probably all assume. And they recently just posted out on the Twitter here. It's like the first thing they've tweeted since like, <laughs> since the pandemic hit really. Uh, saying that we're back on set for Halo making Master Chief. And there's a picture of the star of the show, uh, Pablo Schreiber, who's been playing as Master Chief in with his little awesome mask and <laughs> Or it says John on here on his trailer, which I think is kind of funny. And uh, where can I get this mask? Uh, I definitely would wear this. I don't care if anyone thinks I'd be looking weird. This would, this would be something I would want to wear. We have some more news as well as Jen Taylor, the voice of Cortana herself, is jumping in with this show. Now, originally, Natasha McClone, let's say pronounce it, uh, was going to do the double duties of playing Catherine Halsey and Cortana, because if you guys don't know, in the video games, Jen Taylor right here, voices Cortana and Catherine Halsey at the same time. But Megalone is not able to complete her role due to scheduling conflicts because of the delay that happened with the Halo TV show. So they're bringing in Jen Taylor, the original voice of Cortana, to do the voice acting for that role, which is awesome. I think it's probably something that I think a lot of Halo fans originally wanted, which is fantastic. This, for Halo fans such as myself, just kind of helps bring in that immersion for this TV show whenever it does come out in 2021. That at least when you see Cortana, you see her as you hear the right proper voice coming out of that character, depending on the model that they use for the Cortana model, because we do know throughout the Halo games that Cortana has looked quite different between each Halo game. My personal favorite one being the uh, H2A blur cutscene version of Cortana, I think is like the best Cortana we've ever seen. Hopefully the model her or something based off of that, of course we still just don't know. So I think we're just lucky that they were able to get Jen Taylor to fill in for this role and since she, you know, has acted out Cortana roles for over a dec- for multiple decades at this point now, uh, that I think they got the right person. Though this isn't the first person that has to leave the TV show due to scheduling conflicts because of the pandemic delay. Uh, the Halo TV show recently lost their director. Yeah, the director's gone, which is, a. Uh, have a big hit. I think we lost a previous one with Rupert Wyatt, and now they have a different one uh, with MJ Bassett, who had to leave now due to scheduling conflicts because of the pandemic delay uh, affecting all the things he's doing over in Hollywood, which is, you know, this kind of stuff is uh, expected. You know, trying to, you know, they really did actually like start production for the show literally like in November of 2019. And so they only had about like two months worth of work at best put into the show. And then the whole situation throughout the world happens. And now they just start again. Hopefully we see the show come out probably in the fall or winter of 2021. Uh, not totally sure exactly when that's going to happen though, because we haven't heard anything for the uh, scheduling because they're still filming. You know, they're still planning to film the last episode in Ontario. If you watched my previous video talking about the Halo TV show news and stuff like that and how they're looking to get back into production, they brought in a new production team that's been involved with the Star Trek fr franchise brought them over the Halo to help finish out the sh show because right now they said that it's kind of just a collection of random scenes and doesn't really have a coherent narrative at the point. So they're going to be doing some reshoots, which is very common within TV shows and movies. Uh, they're going to be filming some new parts, revoicing revo some new parts as well. As we do know with you know Jen Taylor coming in as Cortana, you have to redo all those lines right there as well. And they're, like I said, I think they're planning to do the last episode, which would be episode six in Ontario, Canada, and filming some of the extra scenes that were originally in Budapest. In this article here, they mentioned about behind the scenes changes, saying that MJ Bassett has been forced to leave the project due to the COVID, I can't say it on YouTube, delays. And these kinds of issues in production and recording are not new when it comes to creating things like TV shows and movies, but 
you know, it definitely just makes it more difficult to make. Uh, like I mentioned in a previous video that they originally had 10 episodes, that was cut down to nine. And now we're just gonna be getting six episodes for the first season. Now it is very typical to have your first season be shorter and then your second sequential seasons after that being longer if it gets signed up. So cross on our fingers, we get more than just one season for Halo guys. And now the news I'm sure many of you are here for, the Halo Infinite delays and also turnover being talked about by the boss of Xbox himself, Phil Spencer. And after kind of reading through this interview, I'm like, he's either being honest, which I think Phil Spencer is a rather honest person when it comes to talking with the community at large, though I think he also might be playing a little bit of damage control to try to go like, hey guys, we're not on fire. Yeah, at least. In an interview with GameSpot themselves, uh, Phil Spencer mentions that he talked about they talked about the changes happening across the uh, stuff that's happening with Halo Infinite right now. And he said that what's happening is very normal and that what's being reported right now doesn't always line up to what's actually happening. I think what Phil Spencer means by that is essentially that the news that gets released and what's happening behind the scenes, it may line up to look really bad, but it actually might not be exactly what we're seeing, which Kind of tough to believe that. Uh, Phil Spencer is quoted here saying, sometimes what hits the press or when certain things get announced internally have actually happened months before. This is very true. Uh, when Joseph Staten and Pierre Hintz came on to help out with Halo Infinite's development back in August, and then we didn't hear about the departure of Chris Lee until October. So essentially that was kind of like a phasing out time right there. So. Um, pretty much, I think, after the reveal of Halo Infinite, they knew that there's been some mismanagement in some ways, and who's the head of Halo Infinite? Chris Lee. And so ultimately, everything falls on his shoulders, and they weren't able to deliver on time for the ha Xbox Series X. Now, I don't know if that's necessarily an issue with the development itself, or just more kind of like a business decision due to not being able to hit the time frames that Xbox wanted to match the release date of the Series X. Bill Spencer continues saying, it's not always accurate when these things line up. We did take the feedback coming out of the July showcase event seriously, both on the date and what people were expecting from the game. And then he continues saying, it was a miss on our part, on my part. To open our July showcase with Halo Infinite and then a couple weeks later I have to move the date, I don't take the sentiment and the emotion of our fans and our consumers lightly. We set an expectation there, this is something you're going to have at launch. And then to have changed the expectation not too much after showing, that's a mistake. Which is great this year. Now I'm glad that they're able to step and be like, yeah, we kind of messed up on that. Because I think they all kind of knew that the game was going to be delayed. They might just wanted to see what the community's reaction to the current state of the game. And if we had a lot of issues with it, then they probably would delay it. Because I know they really, really wanted to meet that uh, November 10th deadline. But it looks like they just weren't able to quite get the game over the finish line there. And so after seeing the uh, feedback in July, which is very warranted, you know, I think it was a very well-received um, response from the community that we didn't just go out and throw with pitchforks and torches trying to burn everything. Yeah, you know, we it liked what we saw, just the functionality of everything with like the lighting and the textures and the pop-in geometry wasn't exactly what we would expect from a next-gen game, especially from a Halo game. Bill Spencer continues saying that essentially that he has a lot of fate with uh, Bonnie Ross and the team over at 343, also bringing on Joe Staten and Pierre Hintz to help out during the uh, late summer months as well as when they joined in. Uh, just really does kind of reassure that it looks like we're not going to see be much more of a high-end shakeup like we did with seeing Chris Lee leave the uh, project. I think that we're going to see a pretty much a steady group of team. You know, there was rumors that more people were going to be leaving. I made a video on that uh, because uh, Brad Sams, who's a known insider for Microsoft and Xbox in general, did say that we might be seeing some more people leaving the project after Chris Lee. Uh, we haven't seen anything yet. Uh, that could have been just more rumors and stuff like that from Chris Lee's departure as well. Um, because um, I would think that like if you have more departures coming to 343 and uh, you know if someone like Chris Lee is leaving, who else would be going besides Bonnie Ross? I mean, she's the head of 343 and you know, to be honest, like the community doesn't have the greatest response to 343 when it comes to creating Halo games. There's even one part here within this post talking about how uh, Phil Spencer says he actually 
you know, is kind of expected to see this kind of turnover within the uh, gaming industry. And also kind of mentions that he, you know, expects and kind of likes having high turnover, I guess, because uh, he wants to have people that are really motivated to be working there. Which I would assume that anyone who's involved with this project for Halo Infinite would be a highly motivated person and would want to have their name stamped on this. Like, yes, part of Halo Infinite's launch and it was fantastic. That sounds to me a little bit more like damage control, if anything, though I could be wrong on that. Maybe he's just genuinely thinks that. I mean, he's been head of Xbox for like a five, six years or something like that, something around there. Maybe even close to seven, because I think Don Maddock was just kind of out as soon as the launch of Xbox One happened. Uh, so, you know, it, he's been around for a while and he's definitely seen some highs and lows when it comes to the game development side of things for the Microsoft Studios. So I think it's best to take his word, but, uh, you know, he is the, also the head of Xbox and, and he would have some vested interest in what he has to say about saying that, guys, everything is fine. This is supposed to happen. No worries here. And so it's just kind of, uh, well, uh, I think it's a little bit of both. I think he's also being genuine and honest with the community for uh, their expectations with Halo and stuff like that. But I think he's also trying to play a little bit of damage control just to make sure that uh, to make everyone's worries lessen a bit when it comes to the, the development of Halo Infinite. Because honestly, since um, since the July reveal, it's been kind of nothing but bad news, to be honest. We haven't heard anything really about Halo Infinite that's overwhelmingly positive besides hearing that the multiplayer is free to play and it's 120 FPS. But if we have any more Halo Infinite news or anything else related with Halo guys, I'll make sure to let you know on the channel. We got MCC's launch of Halo 4 coming out pretty soon. We got some more news coming out for the TV show, I'm, I'm assuming as well, as production has started on that. And always, we'll keep you up to date with Halo Infinite. So if you like this channel guys, make sure you subscribe, check out the videos on the screen right over here. If you missed any content from me recently, got a link to all my news and informational videos. You've been out of the loop for the last few days or so. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.